How do you spend your time? Take a minute. And if you don't have a pen, I'm going to walk down the aisle and, and just think about an average, typical day, a weekday for most of us. Kids, think ahead to the school year because that's your, your day for most of the year. And, and just make a, make a list. The front of your bulletin will, will give you space if you don't have any other paper. Make a, make a list of the different activities in a, a typical day. And if you have time with each one, then kind of just jot down about how much time you spend on it. Okay? I'm going to give you a minute or two. I want a pen. Do you have a pen? Don't worry about it. Should have done this before. Another one? You got it. Okay. perfect, but just get the idea. Typical day. List of your activities. You start to get it down, does it feel like your schedule's full? Typical day. in front of you starting to feel stressed about things. <laughs> you start to see your list form. How, how about this? Are there are there any things on your typical day where you see them listed and if you got time to put down the amount of time you get with them where you go, man, I wish I had more time for that? You just have work lit, so you don't want more time for that. <laughs> maybe some maybe some things then that aren't on your typical day that you wish that you wish you, you had time to a lot for them. Gabby, it's your confirmation day, so you know you're you're coming up senior year, right? It started and um, and so I think you've got enough perspective now, enough years under your belt to understand the value of time, how valuable it is. Um, we've talked, you've got some of the, what are they called, the um, AP course that you're doing? Is that what it is or is it something else? Okay, so, um, and some others that have, have talked about doing something similar, talked about the time required for that. So you've got your time for school and you've got your time for extracurricular or curriculars. I know you have volleyball, extracurriculars. You've got your time for your family, you've got your time for your, fa fa for your friends, and, and in addition to all those, there, there are other things that you have time that you fit in into your time. Um, have you ever thought, this is everybody, have you ever thought how time is a precious commodity? Have you thought about it like that? And, um, and you, can, you can spend it, right? You can spend it on something that you have set in your schedule, or you can trade it in, that commodity. Trade it in for something else. Say an invitation comes along, and so you, you put that into a slot that you have for something else. You make time, or you keep time on your schedule for the things that are important. Think about what's your time worth? We say time is money, right? And, and you can get an example to really draw that out. Um, you have a job, and you have a job where you're offered overtime, some optional overtime, but it's a choice you have to make. If I have to trade in, in order to get that extra pay, if I have to trade off time, maybe I had a, an event planned out with my significant other, my spouse, or 
the one you're dating, or you, you would miss out on your child's recital or their, their big game. Is it worth it? Is it worth the trade-off? Whether you have other investments or not, this is one commodity that you have controlling interest over. Your time. And we all have the same given to us in, in every single day, right? And children, you're not left out here. God gives you the gift of time, too. Obviously, your parents direct a good chunk of your time in your schedule. But there is some time that you have where you get to choose how you spend it. Do you ever find, then, that the ideal of what you had in mind doesn't quite turn out to be the reality? How you get to the end of the day and you had, had all the things that you had, had planned or you had idealized as happening, but they became just a dream because there wasn't the, the time. But here's the thing. How often, how often does that take place, not by necessity, but because of choices that we make? And where we look back at the end of the day and we say, why? Why did I why did I spend time on that? Why did I choose to do that? That was such a waste of my time. You know, many people take care and and carefully plan out a budget for their finances. And in a budget like that, you have you have some flex spending, right? Where it could go for this or that, but there are some items in that, that budget that are set. Those items are, are so important that, that that money is reserved just for them. You're not going to take it from there. If time is a precious commodity, shouldn't we treat it the, the same way? Where, where there are certain things that, that are absolutely necessary, the, those things that we should reserve uh, our time for. They are so important. Everything else will have to wait. And, and if there isn't time, it'll just have to wait till another day or another time in life. I'm going to throw out to you to a, cha a challenge here. Um, take, take an inventory. Maybe you start tomorrow and for a couple days. Just take a, an inventory of what you spend your time on. How much time do you spend chasing around town? And how much time do you spend chasing rabbit holes down internet searches and, and surfing the web? How much time do you spend on, on personal interaction, you know, like meaningful conversation with your family or with other individuals like friends, compared to how much time you spend on screen time, where there's some conversation going on, but you're just an observer. You're just the outsider there. And finally, how much time, see the time that, that you give and, and set aside for studying Jesus' words. And then offering up your replies of your, your praise and your, your prayers to him. God's word today teaches us to set the, the number one priority with the, the budgeting of our time as time listening to Jesus' words, ingesting his words to us. Everything else will find a proper place after that is the priority. <coughs> So, enter the home of, of Mary and Martha with me, and we, we come in at this, this moment where all of a sudden tension just, just flares up. Don't just sit there. Do something. Right? Have you ever been in that scene before? Either the one saying words like that, or, or maybe the one hearing words directed to you like that. Don't just sit there. Do something. And at first, I'm sure we could, we could easily jump in on the side of Martha, right? And, and we can understand. There she is. She is, she is going about her, her laborious tasks. And Mary is sitting nearby. But Jesus, what does he do? Jesus flips the scene. Does it kind of surprise our senses? Jesus jumps in on the other side of the argument... And he, he uh, admonishes Martha. Why? I mean, Martha is, is honoring with her service, she is honoring the most important guest that has ever come into her home and ever could, right? 
she understood that. She knew that Jesus wasn't just an ordinary individual. She knew him to be the promised Savior. Over in John chapter 11, we hear on record the day when, when her brother died, and well, it was after her brother died, when Jesus came, and she says of Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. Can you imagine? Put yourself in their shoes. There you are. You're getting things ready in the kitchen, and you look out across the room, and, and there is the Savior. The Savior prophesied for thousands of years through the Old Testament. The Savior who came into the world to bear your sins and bear the sins of all people. And she wanted to do something to, to serve him. As far as that goes, can, can we condemn Martha? I, I'd want to find some way to serve him too. Notice, Jesus does not scold Martha for her service to him. But he does point her to what she forgot. She failed. She failed to prioritize listening to, to Jesus' word, listening to, to God's word as the top priority. Don't just do something, sit there. Gabby, have you ever had your mom say that to you? That's the question. <laughs> Dad. Don't, don't just do something. Sit there. That's perfect. That, that's perfect when we come to, to this topic that we're taking a look at. When it comes to the use of your time, everything else can wait after setting the first priority of sitting at Jesus' feet and taking in His Word and His truth. Doing this and doing that, running here and, and running there. Helping with this or accomplishing that. Even, Gabby, you mentioned that the goal of, of, is it a pediatrician that you have? You want to study? Okay, so even a goal like that of studying and doing some honorable life service to other people as a, a pediatrician, all of those things can find their proper place. But only after this first thing. Only after the first thing is put first. Don't just do something. Sit there. Time dedicated to hearing our God, listening to His Word. However strange it might sound, I want everybody to listen to this carefully, however strange it might sound, the greatest honor that we can give to our Lord in the use of our time is to let Him serve us. The greatest honor that we can give the Lord in our use of our time is to let Him serve us us. What, what are we doing? What are we doing when we give and spend our time sitting at Jesus' feet, listening to his word, taking in his truth? We're giving him our attention. We're giving him that, that honor. We're giving him the confession that he deserves it. We're, we're giving the confession and, and expressing the awareness that there is nothing better that we could set as our, our top priority as we, we schedule out our time because this word is, is life-giving. This word is, is soul-renewing. This word is, is pure, unadulterated truth through and through. We could spend our time on all sorts of, of good things, great things, being the best parents we can be. Serving our, our families. Being the, the best employees we can be. Serving our, our wider community. Serving at a place like our church. Serving fellow believers. But, and those are all great. Don't get me wrong. But if we get so busy with all of those, do we ever get so busy with all of those good things of service that we get distracted and leave undone the one most important thing? I mean, think about it. If... If you or I had magic memory, and we could actually get down a list of every way that we've used our time over our past days and months and years. Okay, magic memory now. All right, you got it all right there in front of you. How many times, how many times has it happened that we've let other things push aside the honor our Lord deserved of receiving our attention to take in his word and his truth? 
and it's readily accessible. It's all right here, right here. How many times have we allowed other things to, to squeeze this out of the right and the top spot? But how did God himself spend his time? Jesus, God the Son, spent every moment in every word, through all his actions, in his earthly lifetime, he spent it for you. And he had to. That, that's what it took in order to, to save you and me. To live the, the perfect life that we failed to live. He, he lived it for us. You know, think about it, kids. He knew that sometimes you would complain. Like maybe when you, you're here at church, but you really at the same time want to be playing instead of, of listening. Teens, he, he knew. He knew that, that you might grumble sometimes about getting up for church. I'm not rejoicing like the Psalms said. Rejoice when they, they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. Or maybe, or maybe there to, there's times that you grumble because of the time you have to spend in and study for something like catechism instruction for confirmation. Adults with me, he, he knew how often um, we would get so busy with all the things that, that need to be done that we, we lost sight of the most important thing. Instead of setting it as the first priority, we left off the time listening to his, his word. Or how often has it happened where we've made time for that special show that we like to watch or that other interest that we have, but we, we didn't take the time to prepare ourselves and our children for the battlefield that we call the world with its constant influences and, and philosophies that attack our faith daily, even before we leave our own home sometimes attacking us. Every second of Jesus' life he spent for you. He lived for you and for me. All the way to the cross where he, he took all of, all of the pain, even ultimately hell itself suffered there for us. And when our Savior rose from the dead, what did it prove? It proved that God in heaven accepted that time, that perfect life that Jesus lived in our place. And so now he has set the record straight and right for each one of us. Believe this. Believe this and you are saved. We have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Hebrews 10. And anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Acts 2. So what does God see? When he looks at, at you, who through faith in Jesus are his dear child, God sees the splendid and, and holy life, the perfect record of Jesus. He no longer sees our failures in scheduling of time and prioritizing him. It's all been washed away through Jesus. This is God's good news right here. This is the message we trust. Now God tells us to keep on taking in this very word, because he knows we're going to need replenishing from his truth, from his, his love, from his forgiveness, so that we have strength, so that we have, so that we have peace as we face each new day. This is the most important thing that you and I can do in, in all of the world. The most important important activity. For when we neglect it, it is detrimental. And we're given an example of that, right? A very practical, real-life example of that right in front of us in this Bible lesson that we have. Martha was so worried. Martha was so distracted by all, all the little things going on that it affected her relationship with Jesus. Do you hear it? Don't you care? She lost sight of just how much Jesus cared 
for her. That's what happens. That's what, what happens to us easily. We easily start to doubt the Lord's promises, the absolute nature of their truthfulness. Our sinful flesh tugs at us with its self-distorted narrative, or the devil tries to distort our perception of reality to, to mislead us, to put us into a fog of worry and, and doubt and, and concern. Have you ever been in a heavy fog? I heard once the statistic given, I don't know, I know the science behind it, but I heard once it only takes a cup of water to cover like a seven block area of a, of a city, of a town with heavy fog. Only a cup of water, that, that's pretty small, but you think of it, how much how much distortion it can cause, how much of a crippling effect a heavy fog can cause for your ability to, to see where you're going, to navigate safely. Worry. It, it's like that, that cup of water, right? It can become that in our lives and put this heavy fog and, and put this, this difficulty in, in navigating correctly our relationship with Jesus, where things stand. You know the solution, right? What was the solution for Martha? He was sitting right in front of her. The solution was, was listening to Jesus' word. God's word brings clarity, including the, the ability then to thankfully serve the Lord as Martha set out to do. Mary. Mary shows an understanding of this, and she listens at Jesus' feet to his word. That is to be our characteristic as believers. May God grant us that, that wisdom to, to be able to, to seize the gifts of opportunities like right here on Sunday mornings to listen to his word and take it in. Or in your daily daily schedules to, to have time where, where you seize the opportunity to, to open your Bible, hear his word, study his, his word, or or pull out a, a devotion like the meditations that we hand out. Or, or pull up on your phone or your computer one of the wells.net devotions that are, are there for you. Lord, inscribe this truth in our heart to, to honor you. To honor you with how we, we prioritize listening to your word as number one in how we schedule our time. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.